Fucking up, Carl. Save it. Let's go. What's this one? It's for? already going. But... <laughs> so this is within two boxing. I, I was going to give us a countdown in, but we're already going. Carl Frotch, George Groves, welcome to Into Boxing. Good to see you both together. Carl, I'll start with you, Zoe. How are you finding the, the friendship on tour? Yeah, it's very good. We, um, we've become acquaintances, is that the right word? For a couple of years now, we was in Saudi for the um, AJ Brewers rematch. We did a bit of work on the Bellu Hay fight as well. Before that, I think. So we worked on Sky Sports and, you know, we've, um, we've buried the hatchet, as they say. George? Yeah. In agreement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buried the hatchet. I mean, I hope it remains that way. I mean, we've got 10 days to give out. I don't want him to start swinging at me <laughs> in a few, few times. Uh, no, yeah, you don't want to be on the end of one of them. No, definitely no. not, no. It's been a while, you Listen, know. I'm that fond of him tonight. I got here half an hour early. Phoned him up, where are you? He went, I'm, I'm just taking my time in my rolls on the motorway. Hit a bit of traffic. So I waited outside, got the traffic cones, got in my parking space, and stood and waited in the drizzling cold so he pulled up I moved, the what, cones, I moved the cones and he parked off that's just it you don't see he's got a real how good was it's that a, it's fatherly but motherly as well you know he caught last we did Bristol he caught me on the way home make sure I was alright no I did though long yeah. drive yeah, long it was drive, a good yeah. night wasn't it yeah a bit wet did you like that car I'm dead in love did I get my missus he went she went oh sweet <laughs> sweet it's sweet is you know, it was from the heart that I meant that yeah I, like, I, I could I tell I said to Leah the I said just check he's alright the tone's got him so it's long drive isn't it yeah this, this idea of having you guys on tour, the, the rivals on tour, if you like, how, where, where does your rivalry stack up, if you like, in the great British rivalries over the years? The reason I ask, of course, Ben Eubank are doing their yeah, tour at the moment, yeah. getting a lot of great press as well. Theirs, we? We're not promoting <laughs> theirs. We can, bleep, we can bleep out the names, but your rivalry aside is one of the great British What's rivalries. One of the genuine rivalries. Where, yeah. does it, where does it stack up in, in, the, in the, the great pantheon? Top three. Who else? Ben, it, who ben else? Eubank was, was a genuine rivalry. I'll let you go with the next one. That's it, isn't it? Like, well, certainly rivalry. recent times, I mean, yeah. like, you know, Carl... Carl um, David Hay and Tony Bellew had a bit of a rivalry, but it's a bit pantomime as well, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it? that was disingenuous. I mean, like, um, and, yeah, the heavyweights never really had any rivalries going, I can't think of now. Like, you know, People I had a rivalry, start. another rivalry with the Gales. Uh, yeah. We only had one fight, one pro fight out of it. This so. was a genuine rivalry that captured the public's imagination because they could see it was real. When we had the first fight where George served me up, you know what I mean? He did, he gave me a proper beating. That's why that was his job. He did a good job yeah. in the first fight. I know he didn't get the result, you know, but boxing don't always go go the way you want, you want it to. And things happen, which we're, we're going to talk. We all talk about the first fight. Um, Howard Foster, the referee in that fight, you know, he's been accused of stopping the fight early and lots of people say he stopped it at the right time. It's a debate, but that first fight and the way George performed in that first fight, which was which was nothing short of brilliant. It was a it was a brilliant performance. It really was. I've never been I've never been punched in so much in my whole life. A boxing, I've had quite a few fights and the trail professional and a few street fights as well. Um, but George performed well, in that. and that created the rematch. And uh, we're we're both like we both played our part. I can, tell, I can tell that you both enjoy looking back on it now it's all done but one thing I want to ask you I know we don't have loads of time one thing I want to ask you and I know that these, these questions are often overdone how would you do against the likes of today so I'm not going to ask that question now what I, what I want to put it is I want to ask Carl first how you think George would do against the likes of Canelo these days and then George I'll put the, the same question to you about Carl in a moment like, you see George go into this live division at the minute you've got Canelo seemingly about to take the, the undisputed crown how, how would George do in that division at the moment? In the super middleweight division. Yeah. I don't think Canelo's that big, but he stepped up from, was he welterweight or? He was super welterweight, I think. Super, so the old, old light, middle. light middle. So 11 yeah. stone, 160 pounds. I mean, to step up from 160 up to 175 when he beat Kovalev, to me, that's not normal. And it's not natural either. Now, I don't want anybody to read into that too much. Not many people can do that. Not many people can step up them weights and, and do well and go back down and still succeed. So... That's one, that's one thing. The other thing is, I don't think Canelo's big enough. Even though he's stepped up, I've stood next to him, he's five foot nine, he's, he's got short reach. Okay, he's tough, he's a good boxer, he's a, he's a top boxer, top fighter. I just think I'd have been too big and too strong for him. But we're talking about George. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think George would have struggled. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Listen, when I was, um, 
when I was super middleweight, oh, world champion, uh, no one was asking when I'm going to fight Canelo, you know, but b- boxing opinions change and it goes on and he's done well at super middleweight, but I agree with Carl, he's not, he's not quite big enough. And we were talking about on the way up here with my friend and it's like, he's, he's phenomenal, he's a brilliant athlete, he's, he's, he's grown into the super middleweight division um, and beyond before like heavyweight. But has his wins been a touch flattering? He's performed well, but was the win against Smith, who looked pretty dead at the weight, was that flattering? He beat Billy Joe Saunders, who, for me, two weight world champion, but a middleweight, you know? And When he stepped up to line weight for Kovalev, Kovalev was finished after Ward. Yeah, it's yeah. he three just, just fought with Yard, hasn't he? Just he just fought Yard, and it, they were pushing for that fight. It's yeah. not like they knew something, you know? And every, he's the A side, he's, he's the Mayweather of the, the time. Of so everything's on his terms, fights when he wants, dictates. But I think Asian to summarise, he's a top, top five. One of the best, Asian if, if not the best. Pound for pound, right up there. But he's not a natural super middleweight. And I think me against him, in my prime, a super middleweight, it would have been like when I boxed Arthur Abraham. And I, I, I schooled him, I boxed him, back, yeah. backed him up, smashed him to bits. I won on points, but I give him a bit of a shellacking. Tough guy, to be fair, Abraham. Like, very tough guy. He was knocking everybody out at middleweight. And everyone was worried about him. And I got in there and I boxed him, kept him long, smashed him to bits and beat him. And I think Canelo would have given me a tougher fight, but I had to back myself to win. I really would. Just want to ask you guys briefly, oh, we're seeing all these exhibitions doing the rounds at the moment. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about them. Carl, in particular, we've seen you linked with the Roy Jones fight. Is there anything to that? And if not, would you come back for anyone else? Yeah, well, we're not, we're not in any rush to do it. And Roy Jones has been, been talking about fighting me. And I've, I've said, listen, I'll, I'll have a little dance around with Roy Jones. Roy Jones is a legend. I've got a service respect for him. It'd be a shame to have to punch him in the face but if, if, if it has to be done it has to be done but to be honest the fight I could really get up for is that kid from Wales Joe Calzaga heard of him yeah and I gave him some stick the other day I'm not in a bad or malicious way just in a way that if he fancies a, an exhibition that wouldn't be an exhibition that would be something I could get up for we could have a eight too many round dust up do you, see, do, you, do, you, do you see that happening? Do you think that could happen? Listen, if he decides it wants to happen, it's the balls in his court because I will definitely fight him in an exhibition. I've already said that. I've already said that on camera. I can't remember which channel I was on. But, um, yeah. He'd have seen it and he's not, he's not come out because I think he, I think he knows. But listen, it's an 82 minute I think he's gone into training already. Yeah, maybe he's just he, gone underground. Yeah, he's in, he's in the gym. I mean, he's in the valley. Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's super fit. I him fast. What a fighter. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to fight Joe? Yeah. Listen, I mean, it'd be a good fight. It'd still be close. Anthem, that is, yeah, proper yeah, anthem. Yeah, you know, he's yes, light, yes. lightning fast, you know, every shot in the book. Yeah. You're a fan, aren't you? He's a Cal's Aggie fan. He's a Cal's Aggie fan. Just I'm a Joe fan, you know, I like Joe. Yeah. I don't know, I'm on a, on a personal person. I've met him a few times and he's just a lovely guy. You know, I've, heard that. I've heard good things about him. Yeah, Darren he's... Barker speaks highly of him. Yeah. I've never met him personally. No, I've got no real beef with cows like it. We, <laughs> we was in different times of my career. When I was knocking on the door for a world title, and I was mandatory, and he kept holding the belt until the final day before he vacated. Yeah. And I boxed Jean Pascal and beat him for the WBC world title, then went on to defend it numerous times. in a fantastic career. Joe Calzaghe went on and fought Roy Jones, who was an old man, and shot to bits, which I've said before, and he's pulled me on it. And Hopkins, which actually turned out to be a very good win for Calzaghe, because Hopkins went on to do very well after yes. that win, after the loss to Calzaghe. So you've got to give him credit, but a fight with Calzaghe now, I still think would be a big fight. Something I could get up for, and something I'm up for. So, you've heard it again, if he fancies it, he knows where to find it. George, just finally, is it something that you'd be interested in, maybe getting back in the ropes for an exhibition? Not quite yet, not quite yet. <laughs> I'm 33 years old. I'm younger than half the world champions out there, I bet. So uh, I'll wait till I'm a little bit older um, before I start getting that itch. If it's not the age of the car, it's, it's the miles on the clock. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a shot younger. I have still got some miles on the clock, though. No, that's the problem. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 33. 30, 30, yeah. Yeah. 33. 33, yeah. He's 11 years younger than me. Yeah. You're younger than me. I didn't realise that. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Look how good you're doing. Like, you're you're doing flying. Better. You're flying. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a... Not for me, not for me, not quite yet. Not you quite don't yet. fancy an exhibition? No, well, I don't know. What, so what are you me, saying? If me what are you saying? Like, <laughs> would you fancy a little bit of a little push pull? Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't start. He does his thing. Hey, lads. Is the man actually going to get on the spot? We're doing the interview. Never got a chance before. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. by myself, yeah. like. Fucking brilliant. Nice one, Cheers. I've got to say, that's all we get. That's all we get. We're fucking. I've got to say before, before I let you go because I know you've got to go in a sec I, I, I stood and watched you get the photos done before and Carl 
puts it in every handshake. I've not, not, not taking anything away from George's handshake. Oh, well, good yeah, to me. Well, good to me. And yeah, fa- yeah, I think fans are pretty. I'm not taking anything away. I'm not taking anything no, that's away. That's exactly what you've done. That is, <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. It wasn't. Now this is Carl's crowd tonight. I know. You know. I've said, said, they, I said. I strategically placed him closer to the queue. Yeah, they come in. Carl. Yeah. He had one guy picture putting sun cream on his back. <laughs> I mean, someone. who's got that? <laughs> you can't deny it. Is sun cream in the back? I mean, that's just one that's as from many. Vegas, yeah, one. that was from Vegas. That's still Mayweather. Gives it. Would you like a bit of cream on your back? Go on then, if you don't mind. <laughs> brought the picture of it tonight. Listen, brought the cream as well. It was the catchy after the show, didn't it? <laughs> Listen, boys, it's been, it's been a treat. I know, I know you've got to go back in there. It's always a pleasure. Enjoy the, enjoy the night. Uh, and what a rivalry. We enjoyed it all the way through. Good luck for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.